Have we, is we waiting to play it? Check the deck queue. All right, Esper Hero. So this is one of the more creature-based configurations of Hero. I know um, some of the, the build that did well at the Invitational and the Open recently had less creatures on it. Um, you can even get enough data to make educated guesses. That's just not true. I, I would really encourage people that think their, their 80 or even 100 match sample size of information is statistically relevant. There are a ton of good free online introductory statistics courses. And please read about sample sizes and then read about variations and how variations in things mean you need even more data to mitigate those variations and what's going to have happen. Nothing, nothing grinds my gears quite like people trying to make strong conclusions with data that's insignificant. Alright, anywho, um, this is a slightly older take on the hero archetype. Again, a lot of the decks we play here are viewer submitted lists. This is a hero list that someone sent in. So we're going to play card for card what they're doing and maybe we can think about and talk about it as we're playing this compared to the more controlling builds that have been successful of late. Twin P, thank you for the tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome. If you were to join a competitive tournament in this format, what deck would I bring? I'm playing in a uh, two five thousand dollar tournaments this weekend in the Chicagoland area, and I'm playing Naya Feather, which is the deck we're going to be playing next. We're going to be playing Naya Feather today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, so I can practice getting in some repetition with it. The actual, the actual answer is that except in really bad, narrow formats, you can't really predict what you're going to be playing against with any in any precise manner. In, in any format that doesn't just have three or four decks in it that are showing up consistently, you really can't predict what you're going to play. Like, there's probably a dozen different archetypes in this standard format. And, like, you can easily go to a tournament and not play against a number of major archetypes just because there's only so many matches that you play and there's so many different things you could play in those matches. Uh, Twin P, I'd encourage you to hop on into the subs discord and post for feedback there. I don't look at decklist while I am streaming. Uh, Raisin, if you go through and watch some of the leagues from last week, I talk, uh, talk about some of my decisions in those things. If you want a little bit of depth, the TLDR is that I'm just enjoying playing the Naya Feather deck, and Magic's a game that I mostly play for fun. So, generally speaking, even when I go to a tournament with prizes at it that are meaningful, I just play the decks that I'm enjoying playing the most. I'm, I've really been enjoying the play patterns of the Feather deck. And the Boros Feather decks have been putting up results at Grand Prix. So there's a little bit of a pedigree for the archetype there. And I feel like the, the Naya. Uh, I am just at Jeff Hoagland everywhere. You can also find all of my content very neatly organized on my website. I do think that Green Red Sarkin is in an especially bad spot at the moment though. Because... While it's good against the aggressive decks in the format, it really struggles in the face of it really struggles in the face of these uh, thief of thief of whatever these decks that steal your stuff. Huh? Magic's, Magic's a game where, like, there's so much variance that if you're only playing to win, you're probably going to be sad a lot of the time. Alright, so I'm going to take the Ritual of Soot here. Sweet. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and Discovery and draw that land. Uh, I'm actually going to bin this because they, uh, they have an Elder Spell in their hand. And then next turn I enter the God Eternals this and then smack them again.
So, for people that have played Magic a little bit, I've seen people talking about, like, what formats existed where things were super predictable. Good examples that I can give you recently are during Kaladesh block, where energy decks and mono red were everywhere. Those are good examples of there being just a couple of decks that are very predictable. Yeah, the Thief of Sanity is just, like, king of these mid-range games, right? Which is like, while a lot of these decks have cut these Thief of Sanities, he's still a very, very good card. I'm ditching my Thief here. I think, I think I'm actually going to bounce this and then smack them for six here. Just like, kind of get under them. Yeah, I milled myself because it's possible that my opponent could have something like, say, Chemister's Insight in their deck that would allow them to, um, that would allow them to get value out of me putting extra cards in their graveyard that I might prefer to not have happen. Yeah, so if they rejam Nick here, I bin this. I bedevil Nick. I thought erasure them. Take their last spell. Hit them to two. Get another trigger here. For the reason you just saw here, 26 lands later. I wanted wanted to wanted to be able to have extra mana to do something like play an R set. Uh, I don't think Chemist's Insight is particularly popular right now, but I also think the downside of milling myself is basically non-existent, and the potential downside of giving them value is not not good. So if there's... We're looking for Ritualist in here. Yep. Alright, we have a game as they say. I am going to go ahead and kill this because she gives them four looks at something else here. So, Nickel Bolas versus their top decks puts us pretty firmly ahead. Get to untap with this. We'll be in a pretty reasonable spot. No, not really, PK Jeff. I mean, I guess I guess uh, the new Busted Bridgevine card is better than I thought it was. I had that on my list of these might be good, and it seems like it's very, very good. In general, it kind of seems like in deck's construction, if you're in blue, you want to prioritize permanence, you can get card advantage. And, and there's there's a lot of factors in that, expert. So, like, again, the big thing that comes, comes from it is, like, the power level of magic cards is not... Um, is not linear, it's not set in stone, like it's contextual based on like what other people are doing in the format. All right, D-Spark's great here because it kills their big Planeswalkers and their four mana Nick. Tyrant Scorn's pretty bad. This seems mediocre, Hostage Shaker seems mediocre. I just trim a Mortify. I think I'd rather... So, like, would I rather have Mortify or Enter the God Eternals? I might want some amount of vetoes in my deck. Maybe I just cut these... Oh, Deputy of Detention's real bad. Yeah, let's, let's cut him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave one Enter the God Eternals in my deck. Just because, like, they probably have four four-mana Nicks. And this card, like, kills that plus leaves me a threat, which seems very reasonable. I don't, know. I don't know that I want to draw multiple enters per game. Leaving the Mortifies in is probably fine because they like, they're likely a search for Ascanta deck. Did you see a series of Overwatch characters turned into magic cards? I did not. See, it seems fine. To go turn two erasure, turn three thief. Hey, there we 
There's the Escanta. I think I'm gonna lead on this rather than just run this out. Just like getting a lot of information here is valuable. Well, the unfortunate part here is that the search for his canta means they're incredibly likely to hit their fourth land on four. The good news is this Thief of Sanity means I get to discard a card, despark the first one, and hit them with Thief. However, the Thief is going to put cards in their bin, which lets them flip their Ascanta sooner, which is a little bit worrisome. Yeah, Trips, Trips, Nickel Bolas is like, pretty good poker hand. Pa 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 poker face, pa pa poker face, ma 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 ma. Uh, when you resub to a channel, Moldy Locks, you um, you often have to send a message through with it, or or like click don't send a message, and sometimes you have to refresh for that to happen. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna keep these, just because like while bouncing, while bouncing a Nickel Bolas isn't ideal. Getting another hit in with Thief is good, and it like keeps them off tempo, which is nice. And like every time I hit them, I like dig for another answer to Bolas off of their deck. Like that one. I think Dawn of Hope is probably just too slow, clunky, and fair in this format. It takes takes a lot of mana. It's generally just a lot less efficient than just playing good Planeswalkers. The Planeswalkers do a similar amount of card advantage, but for less mana investment, essentially. Did you draw a way to kill my thief? Deal Arena. If this isn't accompanied by a two mana removal spell for the thief, I'm gonna be really surprised. Sure. So, like, they're kind of clearing the way for their 4-4s, four but at the same time, I'm, like, taking cards off of their deck, so they can't, they can't really do anything about these. I think I'm just going to go ahead and plus this here. I don't want to have a card in my hand for when Nikki comes down next turn. I was watching. I, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I've com I've complained. I've complained about that before to my my Twitch rep actually, that that uh, that interface is less than ideal. It's so it's so weird that they put a subscribe. And if you look, if you look really carefully, the button does say subscribe to SCG. But I do agree, you're not the first person to have misclicked that and subscribed to the channel that I'm hosting. Not even by a little. I've not played the Hagak Modern deck, no. It is in the deck queue and we'll get to it at some point. I think the schedule, we're going to play six more Modern decks this week about, so we'll probably get to it next week. Bird! Thank you for the two-month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. But Devil here means we're just... Or Vito here means we're just going to play Protect the Queen on this Thief of Sanity for the rest of the match. And you know, like, a lot of these... Someone someone had commented when we started that this deck list was, was old and outdated and like, well... It's still kind of okay. Like the the things that other people have cut from this archetype are still very reasonable in a number of matchups. Yeah, the the green red deck was unplayable garbage. I've got time. To be to be polite, the green red deck was unplayable garbage. Wow, they just swung and missed. Brutal. Brutal.
That's true. Our opponent, our opponent was kind of a glutton for punishment there, huh? Not, not many people survive that many thief hits. I think the Jeskai Planeswalker deck is one of the 12 or 15 or 20 decks that I would. I would tell you that I'd expect people to play it in this format because it's reasonable. So I just heard the Faith No More song, Be Aggressive for the first time, and I finally understood the reference you've been making for years. <laughs> There's an article on Channel Fireball the other day about how polarizing matchups are more effective at making top eights in tournaments in general and decks that have answers to a variety of things, but I don't think that's relevant for the arena ladder, is it? Um, I think in general, I think it is relevant for the ladder, just the TLDR, but I also think something that's more relevant is that standard in general, to, and this is why standard is generally the preferred constructed format for competitive players as opposed to something like modern. So like modern, for example, has a lot of decks with like 70, 30, or maybe even 80, 20 matchups. And in standard, a polarizing matchup is usually closer to something like 60, 40. There's more, there's more play to it and there's more nuance and sideboards pull things closer to 50, 50 to give both players more decisions. So in general, I don't know that there's that many matchups in standard that I would describe as being incredibly polarizing. I actually think Jund's done Jund has done good work in recent years closing the gap against something like Tron. Oh gosh, we've been waiting to find an opponent for a minute and 20 seconds, chat. What is this, magic online? These Q times. 90 seconds. Oh no. I think this is actually the longest I've ever waited to find a match on Arena. Am I disconnected? Is that what's happening? Am I actually just not connected? This is this isn't real life, right? Like we're only we're only Diamond Two. There are no worthy. Yeah, it might it might be desynced, huh? I I didn't even know this timer went this high. All right, I'm not gonna do a full shill. Uh, I want to restart the client here really quick because the cancel button's not working. I'm going to, like, get back in and, like, be in a match that's going to be waiting for me to choose to keep my hand. DTP, thank you for the six-month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Haven't dropped any frames. Checking for... Did they... Did the servers die? Oh, no. We're in. We're in. Preparing assets. Prepare your assets, chat. I feel like that took longer to get back in than it usually does. All right, look at that. Four seconds. I should have known something was wrong when it took 60 seconds. It never takes that long to find matches on here. As someone, as someone who's waited 20 plus minutes to find a vintage match on, on Magic Online, God bless Arena. That's the first time I've had it randomly drop. Again, I think I'd rather lead on this. Huh. So the elf doesn't really accelerate them to anything super meaningful at this point. So I think I'm going to take the Vivian. Hero's a card that tends to be at its best in the matchups where your opponents are light on removal. Because it is more, more frequently, more frequently is it going to live in those style of matchups. Jackie, thanks for the six months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I think it's always preferable to play Thought Erasure on two over Hero, or is there some nuance there? I think like most things in Magic, the answer is it depends. A big part of what's been influencing my decision to turn to Thought Erasure as opposed to turn to Hero is the fact that I keep having Thief of Sanity as a follow-up here. 
So I think I think having Thief of Sanity as a as a turn three play makes me more likely to thought Erasure on two. Because Thief of Sanity is so powerful when it goes unchecked, the thought erasuring to start helps it be more likely to go unchecked. Hey, thanks for the half a year, Rhino. Alright, how about if my Toll Smear makes a 4 4, a 3 3, and a 1 1? What if? What if it got me all the things? All right, Dovin seems mediocre. Tefri seems mediocre in the face of their haste threats, although he is good against Growth Chamber Guardian, but we're on the draw, which makes him slightly worse. M20 comes out in less than a month. July 2nd is the release date on Magic Arena. So again, uh, two things that I've been plugging for my regulars. The first is, thank you for being my regulars, y'all rock. Uh, I guess that makes three things then. The third, the second is that I'm going to be sending out my quarterly sub survey tomorrow or Wednesday. So if you want to get the email for my sub survey, make sure you go into your Twitch settings and have uh, emails from people you subscribe to enabled. You can also join the subs discord. I'll link it there. The second is is that because Horizons just released, that's the new Modern set, I am going to be doing more Modern every morning until the new set releases. So between now and July 2nd, Standard's going to be starting a little bit later, probably about 11, 11.30. So I'm still going to be doing uh, 15 to 20, 25 hours of Standard per week, but I'm going to be doing a little bit little bit more Modern while that, while that set is fresh. Um, gosh, this seems like really good with the shock land, huh? I'm willing to take all sorts of stuff. As always, if you have a deck to submit, you can uh, do it using the form on my website for all formats. I'm playing Isolated Chapel here on one, so this way if I draw Watery Grave on two, I can play Hero. Ah, Esper... Esper tap lands. Yeah, the only reason the new set feels super fast is because Horizons is technically like a conspiracy-like product, which like normally more competitive players just don't think about. Esper, Esper gates, yep. Just gonna go ahead and pass back here. This island notably does not cast our bell haunt, which is a touch sad, but I don't really want to play hero out either because it'll just die to this fighting something. So I'd like to hold up D-Spark slash Mortify this turn. Ideally, they're going to play like a Dragon or something that gets Mortified. And then next turn, I can go Discovery plus D-Spark something. They play like a Phoenix here. Obviously, I'm going to D-Spark, though. Oh, have at it, boys. Another Druid, sure. Sure. They're actually, that's funny. There actually aren't any placewalkers in my deck right now. Uh, we played elves this morning, DTP, with three of them. I'm actually going to update the elves list on my site later tonight, I think. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to go ahead and spend my mana here. Time wipes a sweet one for them to not know about. So let's do this and then cast Discovery here. Uh, well, Bellhaunt's not castable. So that's probably a good reason to not play Bellhaunt. Well, fortunately for the rest of us, Finn, your feelings are not facts. So I'd encourage you to do a little bit of math before you let your feelings lead you to mana base construction. Nothing left but 
Bye, Felicia. Yeah, yeah, I missed a free attack with my 1 1. Whatever. We won't answer now. Sure. Sure. We've played any decks with Solar Blaze recently. We've not. This is my Lyra. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Domri's only going to fought four this turn. Disgust me more than law and order. Do 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 I feel like, I feel like I want a couple of Elder Spells and a, uh, and a Command in the sideboard. I also feel like this deck doesn't really, this deck has so many creatures, Narset's down tick is kind of mediocre. So let's, uh, let's swap those. Small, small, small subtle changes. Not gonna not gonna completely change off of the creature focus plan. In fact, Thief of Sanity's been really good so far today. Yeah, I think Dovin's fine. I like I like Dovin. Dovin. Dovin's pretty good against the red deck, better than Tefra usually. God, Sire Hawk. Thank you for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me here. I guess that's a new one. It's tough to say welcome back when it's a new one, right? Sometimes sometimes my voice commands go on autopilot. At any rate, thanks for the new sub. Yeah, let's draw some lands. London Mulligans coming when? July 2nd, that is when. London Mulligans coming when? Not soon enough. The awkward part about Dovin in my experience in this format is I really wish Dovin gained counters when your creatures hit Planeswalkers. Combo decks will benefit from the London Mulligan. I think good magic decks benefit from the London Mulligan. I think the decks that are primarily hurt by the change to the London Mulligan are decks that aren't good that are only somewhat competitive because pe because people lose to magic on occasion two more cuts here I just had a first round interview with a group that went through a restructure to have more agile infrastructure and it made me think of you. Well, are you, are you, well, now, now you gotta answer the real question, Cubby Pizza. Are you, are you agile? Are you going to provide, provide what their buzzword needs? Uh, playing Esper Geats here again, but this hand is good. I'm gonna leave that there, I think. We'll go tapped land. Duress tap land on two, duress tap land on three. Uh, the London Mulligan will become the standard for every format of Magic with the new set release. So when when M20 releases, the London Mulligan will be the official Mulligan rule for all of competitive Magic. 
I mean, initially, agile development was basically something to tell these big, these big like Fortune 500 companies that are notoriously slow to get things done that you're supposed to be able to like pivot your development model mid cycle and be flexible. But it's definitely, in my experience, at least when I spent time in corporate America and other people I've talked to, it's just become a buzzword for like one of those goals that you have to have. It's kind of kind of lost context. It's like when people talk about meta gaming and meta games and magic. A lot of the time, half the time, I want to be like, "What do you What do you even mean when you say that?" Yeah, the London Mulligan is currently enabled for Arena Singleton because they wanted to test it on the client before it goes wide for everything. The new London Mulligan rule is a very positive change that seeks to reduce the inherent variance that magic has built into it. In my opinion, it is a very, very good change. Developer for large, slow to move corporation that's agile can confirm. Sounds good, sounds good. Good to know that things still apply. When do spoilers for the course set starts? I don't know, and neither does Watsi. That's not true. Someone there probably knows. Is it a week? That's so that's so long away. A week is forever. I'm a millennial. I want him now. Thanks for the eight month there, Sushi. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right, let's make sure we leave up blue-black here so that if we draw Thought Erasure, we can take this. Buzzwords in business bothers me. As a seasonal staffing specialist, my colleague was making $40,000 a year, me doing the same job as a director for technical recruiting. Yep, yep. I mean, I mean that's not really buzzword-related, right? Like, companies always try and pay people the least amount possible. That's how they make infinite money. Here, Schnick. Thank you for re upping your prime. Welcome back. Here goes nothing. Can you explain the difference between the current London Mulligan rule and the and the regular rule? I can, but Google would be better at doing it for you, so I'd encourage you to look it up. Really should have seen that coming. I believe we have died because they have a Nickel Bolas and a Liliana Dreadhorde General. Is at my disposal. Once half the jobs in sales got turned into key account managers, I stopped giving a crap about job description. Sounds right. What was it? I was uh, during during high school and part of undergrad. Uh, we referred to ourselves as uh, custodial engineers. We were we were janitors. That's what that's it. My place my place of work. That's what we referred to ourselves as. It's very very esteemed title. If you have an en engineer in your title, you have to be fancy, right? Yeah, I had a job. Exactly. I had a job in engineering. That's a good draw. Feather deck, eh? Curator of custodial arts. Yeah, something like that. Ooh, Mardu feather, perhaps? Multi-trained specialist for a few months. It meant I collected carts from the parking lot and clean toilets. That's some good, some good flexibility. Thank goodness the top of our deck is hot, because our hand is not. Nice, Godsire. All right, so our opponent is finally going to get to untap with a threat, which is a little terrifying. Looking for another Doom Blade here. Another way to kill their thing. Main deck, main deck D Spark, not looking so hot at the moment.
Yep. Despite all the rage, it's still just a feather in a cage. Do 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 do. Just despark their instant. Oh no! All right. Well, their feather has drawn three cards here. So prob probably dead. All right. All right. So. I guess, I guess this can go digging for a land and a removal spell. This Liliana Dreadhorde General might be able to drag us kicking and screaming back into this game. Maybe I'm just supposed to dispersal this. Let's see, I can see a world where I'm supposed to just dispersal this. Oh! So you're saying there's a chance. Take a chance on me. Do 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 do. All right, Feather's up to having drawn four cards now. If they have any creature in their hand, they get their Feather back because they get to Reckless Rage, this Deputy of Detention. It's not, it's not looking good for the home team, chap. Maybe, maybe, no, no. It does, it does in fact potentially buy me time for Liliana. That's incredibly true, so... Untapped land. Untapped land. Untapped land. Untapped land. Untapped land. We hit the untapped land here, we get to kill their, kill their dorks and draw a card. And then maybe drag ourselves back in here. Okie doke, take a chance on me. Do 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 do. Listen! As someone who hasn't thought about their deck list hard enough a number of times before and then been gifted a tapped land when he doesn't specifically request an untapped land, it's just it's just conservative to specifically request an untapped land, chat. I've been I've been hurt before, okay? Oh, don't give him haste. Don't give him haste. All right. All right. Slow. Slow and steady. Maybe we can win this game in spite of having mulligans. Gosh, Cranko is so unbelievably worse than Legion War Boss a lot of the time. I get that sometimes he creates huge blowouts, but this card's been really underwhelming. Yeah, we are we are currently ahead. In spite of, in spite of their feather having drawn them four cards, we are currently ahead. You got it. Don't don't give this trample. We can be friends. Yeah, I want to try a couple of Dire Fleets later today when we play. I think Dreadhorde Butcher is a really powerful card, but I haven't found a Grixis deck that I like with him in it. Death is enlightening. I have no idea, Burgle. If they could have, if they would have cycled into like a shock or another rage, they could have killed my planeswalker though here. I definitely agree that I'm not a huge, not 100% sure like what my opponent is doing. I feel like they're not quite playing optimally. I know my I, I agree, Azumail. All right, I agree with that assessment. Yeah, D, D Spark is literally Texas in this matchup for reference. Like a fun new actually does nothing. I think Seraph might lock this up. I think we're into stabilization. We've not seen any black cards yet. It could be for Soren, could be for Duresses out of the sideboard. Hey, look at that. Hey, hey, my D-Spark has text. Woo, D-Spark. 
Mmm, mmm, look at that. Look at that. D spark. D spark. D spark. D spark. D spark. And y'all, y'all didn't think D spark could do it. You didn't, you didn't believe. You didn't believe in Sparky. Bye, Felicia. Was uh, we just had we had an incredible string of top decks to be in that game. Definitely, definitely more than a little bit of fortune on our part there. Deputy's a bit of a, a bit of a hoogland in this matchup. There's gonna be a bit too much of a liability. If I want if I want to kill something, I want to make sure it's gonna stay dead. Time wipe probably not good enough either. I think I want to trim one of these. Like make sure I don't have too much beef at the top. Lyra. Lyra is actually one of the reasons why I really like the Naya Feather deck. Collision Colossus is uh is pretty dope, as the kids say. I think I'd keep that on the play, on the draw. I don't think I can afford to be Esper Gates. Sam's not stellar either. The kids do not say that. Am I out of touch or are the children wrong, Marty? Perhaps, perhaps it is the children. Looking for Doom Blades, looking for ways to kill their stuff. That'll, that'll do, pig. That'll do. I think I'm just digging for ways to kill her stuff. Do I keep this even though I can't cast it next turn? I think so. Because I think I think an 8-8 eight, eight is just like unbeatable here, right? Like their start's not very aggressive here. If I just go like Bell Haunt into like God Eternal, God Eternal, it's like gain three, gain four, gain four. And like have a giant dork. This is my favorite math, math course that I've ever taken. Uh, graph theory and calculus are my two favorite, my two favorite branches of mathematics. Yeah, they have a Soren right here. That's basically a graveyard play. What was the MTGO deck today? We played, oh no, oh no. Oh, oh no! Um, we played green, black elves, ah, uh, infect, and red, green mid range. This is just Hearthstone's the damage will stay there. Yikes! You think I'm happy with how I boarded? Let's run it back. I 
at first. He just didn't do enough on the play. Have you considered just always having it rather than not having it? You know, I agree. I'm inclined to agree that that's, that's, that's the ideal line. Turn one shock. All right. Discovery it is. I'm going to hold on to this in case they have an Adonto or something. Jay Chick, thank you for the 34 months. It's a long time. There was an article on SCG about how the Netflix show will affect MTG Finance. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. <sighs> that That's really... The fact that MTG Arena is kept pure from MTG Finance is really just one of its most, most glowing features. They had a path, nope. Not, not quite a path. Vector calculus gives me nightmares. See, I found um, vector calculus is basically just regular calculus in three dimensions. So I found that pretty, pretty, pretty easy compared to like integration and stuff. After, after doing calc two. Oh ho, we're halfway there. Oh ho, do 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 do. Uh, do we? The old sheltering light to scry one deal. I guess, I guess they get it back, right? So it's a free sky. Subscribe. I crack stir. Thank you for the Twitch Prime support this month. You know, there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Welcome to our community and thanks for supporting it. We have like Samut Sprint here, no, just a GERD, interesting, and a Sprint. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to drop that off, Crack, sir. If there's not anyone else that you normally Twitch Prime sub to, keep in mind that uh, you can drop that off even when I'm not online. If my schedule doesn't quite jive with yours, I appreciate you. Appreciate the support though, either way. Uh, I think these cards are good enough that I'm actually just keeping them here, huh? So the GERD there keeps our dorks at bay. Keeping keeping the Mortify and the Tefri here means even if they find a way to kill the Hostage Shaker this turn, I have a clean answer to Feather, which is nice. Yep. Yeah, right? Well, not necessarily, Marty, because if they flash back the strike, they trigger it with Feather. If you target a token with Feather, do you get it back? Yeah, I think so. Or with Enter, do you get it back? Yeah, totally. How do we feel about trading three tokens for their mana 
And then I can Mortify or Enter the God Eternals this next turn. So, like, obviously they get this back with Feather. But now this gives me a window to kill their Feather here, which is nice. So I'm, like, trading three tokens for the opportunity to kill them. They're almost dead on the backswing. Were they dead on the backswing? One, two, three. They were dead on the backswing, weren't they? Yeah, I, I just wasn't paying attention. I don't, I don't think it matters. We're kind of, we're, we're kind of like approaching like build your own adventure book to victory here. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I could have I could have played Time Raveler, bounced the feather, and killed them there. Or we're really far ahead at the moment. Uh, less less ahead, but still winning. Yep. That line lost to a pyroblast. Yeah, we're definitely just racing them at this point, but like they're gonna they're gonna kind of mow down our board here, right? Because they're gonna get to get their thing back and then kill the hero again here. Yeah, the fact that I'm, I miss lethal there is kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. If I draw an untapped land here, I get to bounce this, kill this. Let's slow this down. No, I am not In the event I don't fight. draw an untapped land, I want to bounce the feather so I can attack. The deck is very good, Garden Variety Troll. I mean, like, Bridge Vine was already an okay deck, and it got multiple good upgrades in this set. Old boy Merlin, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Is this a removal spell? Yeah, I just I just wanted to give him a fighting chance. I wanted to give him give him a fair shake, really. Moving on up. Do, 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 do. Ooh, 40 gems. Angel Puff, thank you for the two-thirds of your support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Uh, Prime subs do not give you a complimentary buff, um, but you can add decks for just $10 for standard with Prime subs. As always, all the details on my deck queue can be found here. Yeah, I really like the Naya Feather configuration. It's the deck I'm going to be playing at my tournaments this weekend. Uh, Saffron Olive on MTG Goldfish is currently streaming. Scheduled maintenance for Thursday. Thanks for the thanks for the heads up, Marty. I'm actually not streaming arena on Thursday. So today, tomorrow, and Wednesday are gonna be my only arena streams this week. Thursday, I'm gonna do some uh, moto in the morning, and then I'm actually taking the afternoon and Friday off. So, one, Clown Copter, I'd prefer we just don't talk about people like that. And two, the way Twitch streaming works, when you first sign on for the day, your viewer count's always low. So, always better to look at historical data rather than to pick out specific instances to cherry pick. Been watching you for a while and determined that you like decks that are relentless and have shenanigans. I like tricky things. Yeah. 
An interesting sign of how hard it is to make streaming a job is that it takes being one of the top magic streamers for Jeff to really turn it into a full-time job. I mean, to a degree. The biggest, the biggest takeaway I would encourage to give anyone who's thinking about getting into streaming is that many of the factors that decide whether or not you can be a successful full-time streamer are wildly outside of your control. You don't, you don't get to pick being a streamer as a job. It kind of picks you. And obviously you have to be like someone who's streaming to have that opportunity become available to you. But you can't just like wake up and say, hey, I'm going to do this and it's going to happen automatically. There's a lot of right place, right time type stuff. Yeah, to a degree, uh, when, when we didn't have Arena, someone like Xion, who was a big part of the community stepping out, definitely opened things up a little bit to people who are looking for some other stuff. I also think Arena in general just made the possibility for the Magic community larger as a whole too, right? Like there were suddenly people who previously like, there was just more viewers for everyone basically, right? Xi'an was a great personality. He was one of the, one of the, he is a good personality. He was one of the regulars that I watched all the time. Even, even the release of a new game doesn't really do it consistently anymore, Def Lobster, just because new game releases these days are generally flooded by people who are already established streamers. I think I'm going to take their elf since they kept this Nyssa and don't have a fourth land. They get to do like this, this. We might work our way towards stabilization here. This is gonna eat my hero. Time to step out of the shadows. Oh, flatter yourself. I think I'm just gonna take this hit. I'm gonna play an elf. Play a thought erasure. Yep. All right. <sighs> dead to dead to a removal spell. But I think I, I think that I think this is a risk I want to take to kill this Fresca. Jeff is my soap opera. Yep. Am I dead? I'm dead now, right? The, the fact that they hit the flying threat and the elf here means I'm dead. Because, like, if I mortify here, they attack with everything. I go chump. I go eat, chump, take one. It's unfortunate. Close game there. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting, troll. I, I would bet... We see a pretty big restructure of the MPL for next year. If only because they have a little bit more time to really think about things. I think I think a big part of why the MPL was such a mess this year was because they were kind of a victim of their own success. I don't think they were expecting Arena to get as big as it got as quickly as it's got. And they kind of rushed things and weren't really prepared. 
for all they had to put together. Yeah, I feel like there was a lot of just like, we got it, we got it. They basically like, they they were agile basically, right? Like they they decided they needed to strike while, while the iron was hot, which is generally speaking a good thing. It's just a lot of the details got kind of muddled. I feel like, I feel like they didn't, they didn't tap people in the community enough either. Like, obviously, they probably don't want to work with me, but, like, if they would have just, like, sat down with, like, me or Numot or Caleb or just, like, some people who really understand Twitch streaming and be like, all right, how do we properly push 30 new Twitch streamers? Like, there's, like, a laundry list of things I would have told them to do that cost little or no money that they just didn't do. And there are also things I would have recommended that cost some money that would have helped as well. But there's just, I feel like they missed on a lot of like really easy things that are obvious to someone like me who's been doing this a while. People, someone, someone who has specialized knowledge in the industry from experience. I bought the Lightning Aggro Challenger deck to be able to play FNM. And I put four light up stage in there to make it more competitive. Do you have any more mono red suggestions? I'm going to be honest. Life is bowling. I don't know what that deck is. So like here's, here's a really good, I actually tweeted this one, a really good example of an easy free things wizard could do to promote their MPL streamers. At the end of every MPL weekly stream, at the end of every MPL weekly stream, they should have one of the MPL people streaming and they should take the thousands of people they have watching that stream and host their MPL streamers who frequently have less viewers than that. Like that, that's how Twitch works. Hosts and raids work for building new audiences. Little, little stuff like that. He's not being starky enough. Feel like working some set slots to MPL streamers. Yeah, yeah, like they should, there should be some kind of coordination between the MPL streamers so they're not overlapping each other. So some people do mornings, some people do afternoons. Like, they basically have enough streamers that there could probably be MPL streamers for, like, certain blocks streaming 24 hours a day where they constantly kick viewers to each other. And, like, obviously that type of stuff would take some coordination work, but especially with people all over the world, it's probably not Im impossible. Hey, JMK, thanks for the 14 months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Let me know what deck you'd like to bump with your tier 2 this month. Let's tear this place apart. Sometimes rest. Oh, not dead yet. I mean, you don't just automatically wake up and be a good streamer either, though, right? Like, if you watch me today and you watch me from, you know, even a year ago or six months ago even like i'm much better at what i do today than then like a lot of these people they're good magic players and they'll get better at streaming with practice correct yeah the the magic channel should be hosting one of them constantly little little stuff like that basically Hey, Kurt and Sheet, thank you for the 10 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Ooh, that's a good suggestion. I forgot that Soren that Soren does a point. I forgot that Soren does a point. That is an A A plus suggestion. Did I even need to despark here? I could have just attacked her in the air, huh? Yeah, I probably just should have attacked her, huh? I have no idea, Troll, but I, I will say that I would imagine someone who has experience in esports events, that's different than having experience streaming and developing a brand on Twitch, right? 
Like, those are, like, the things you need to know to run tournaments is different than what you need to know to, like, do, do Twitch stuff successfully. And like, like I said, while be doing this as a job is like, there's a lot of things that are outside of your control. When you have a big company with piles of money behind you, there, the list of things that you can't control becomes smaller, especially when you have the company that makes the successful game being the one pushing you. I'm just going to stroke this to use my mana this turn, basically. I'm gonna do this into discovery. I don't think this hero is very good at this point. Someone, someone commented on it earlier, but these discoveries have been bidding a lot of heroes. Oh yeah, the fact the fact that they didn't give MPL players full accounts with all the cosmetics also like it's not even just about them having all the cards because I would bet a lot of them bought all the cards, but the MPL streamers should have all the cosmetics, right? Because like the people you, you wanna not only do they look not only do they look sweet, but like you want people to see these sweet things on your featured players so they're encouraged to buy them. I have, I have, I have no, no desire to live in or around where Wizards of the Coast requires people to work. Even, even if they wanted to work with me, no, no desire to take a job there. A lot of, a lot of my ideas I've offered for free or could be handled via a quick phone call or email <laughs> as a, as a consultant. Mr. Photon, thank you for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. My cornfields are lovely. My house, my house that my wife and I bought earlier this year is very large and was very inexpensive in relation to any major city. Uh, we are closing on my old house on June 21st. We had had an offer, accepted it. They did an inspection. They're happy with the inspection, so that's exciting. And then, and then hopefully, hopefully we'll be uh, getting some work done on my studio here, since all my extra money won't be tied up in that. I think this is a mulligan on the draw. My opponent's like a wild growth walker deck that has land war elves in it. They like the kids' artwork. We replaced all of the carpet and uh, painted the entire upstairs and downstairs before we listed. <laughs> Believe it. Believe it or not, you can repaint. Blue land, blue land. This, this is where the magic happens, chat. This, this is where, this is where the magic, the gathering happens. All right, no jade lights good for us. Blue source.
This deck only has 24 lands in it, to be fair, but it also has a bunch of copies of Discovery. So, like, I should let her trigger resolve before I despark, but it also has four copies of Discovery. So, like, if I was going to play more lands, I'd cut those, so we also haven't drawn those. That's, that's good enough for me. Yeah, it's funny. Um, the Sultai Bow and Esper Hero deck, we actually lost almost exactly as much as we won because we started Diamond 2 with two pips and we ended Diamond 2 with two pips. Um... All things considered, I know I don't have a vast amount of experience with this archetype, but golly, does it seem strange that people have cut this card from this deck. Like, in the games that I play with this deck, this card is frequently better than Hero. And I get that it's, like, really bad against the red decks, but, like, a lot of our games we won today were stolen on the back of this card. Um... Deputy and Dovin both were kind of mediocre. Enter the God Eternals is insane. Discovery was actually very good in a lot of the games that we played. I didn't feel too land starved, and I think part of that was because of this card. This card also overperformed for us in Grixis, so now that like the Just Guy Planeswalkers has kind of settled as a deck, there's a little bit less Narsets running around, this card's probably more than reasonable. I mean, Mortify, Mortify and Tefri Time Raveler are fine. D-Spark is fine. Uh, Bellhaunt and Lyra are good, so. All right, what are we, what are we doing? We're going to wrap things up today playing an 